Hello, everybody. This is Pamela. And this is Tracy. And we are here to discuss how business really works. Last episode, we went over the six problems we see on most home pages. They were too much information, fear of white space, lack of call to action with clear navigation, too few or too many images, graphics, clip art, whatever on the home page, visually difficult fonts and colors, and making the home page about you or your business rather than about your client. So today we're going to discuss how to build an effective home page. So before you ever think about the first piece of content you're going to write or graphics or layout or design, you think about that client, you think about that ideal client and what that person is seeking when they come to your website. You think about their pain points, you think about their problems, you think about why they're there, what do they want to solve, what do they want to know. And then you come up with two to three most important pieces of information for that ideal client. And from that, you develop a headline. Now, I'll tell you a company that does a great job with a headline, Dropbox. Because mm, yeah. when you think of Dropbox, what do you think of? Think of cloud storage. Right. But cloud storage is cloud storage. Everybody does cloud storage. They realize that that's not their selling point, and that's not the reason a client comes there. The reason a client comes there is the ease of sharing their documents and their files. So first line, open it up. Reinventing teamwork. Mm -hmm. I know exactly what this is going to solve my problem. This mm -hmm. is a cloud storage that's going to solve my problem. Yeah. Nowhere do they talk about that we're cloud storage. It's further down the page. It's right. below the fold. Yeah. It's all about teamwork. Heading, subheading. It's all about teamwork. You need to think the same way. What's the number one thing you do for your number one client? And I, if I can interject here too, I never ever forgot this really valuable piece of advice that I heard from Derek Halpern. I'm sure it was from him. Um, Cause he was talking about <clears throat> thinking of your business in terms of solving problems. Mm -hmm. And he mentioned something like, what if I don't know what my business is? I'm a photographer. How do I know what problem I'm solving? I'm just taking pictures. I like art, blah, blah, blah. He said, no, you're solving the problem of bare walls. You're selling your art. You're selling your photography to people who are going to hang it. So the problem you're solving is bare walls. Maybe they just moved into a new apartment. Maybe they don't like the artwork they have now. Maybe they've never bought anything before, but they're ready to now. That's the problem you're solving for them, bare walls. Exactly. And I never ever forgot that because it really helped me think differently about what kinds of problems I could be solving for people. Not just kind of resigning myself to, oh, I'm not really solving a problem. I'm an artist or I'm not really solving a problem. I just do interviews. Yes, we're all solving some problem, even if it's not immediately apparent. <laughs> we better think about what that problem is so that we can make our businesses more, address our customers more efficiently. But there's a problem you're solving, even if it's bare walls. Mm -hmm. so. Exactly. <laughs> I love that. I do too. So yeah. it's kind of like headline, subhead. Mm -hmm. it, what is the number one problem you're addressing for the number one client? That's the easiest part of, okay, let me rephrase that. That is not the easiest part because a lot of people really struggle with what is that. But yeah. once you know what that is, that's very easy. Keep it yeah. clean, keep it neat. Um, I'll tell you somebody that does a horrible job at it. <laughs> Are you familiar with mint.com? Yes. Okay. Yep. Headline, tapping your potential. What does that mean? Exactly. That, yeah. Now, the subhead tells me exactly what I do. It's about tracking my personal finance. I can't quote it right now. But, you know, I'm like, why did you waste that headline? <laughs> tapping my potential. I don't think I'm figures they talking about, like, tapping your phone. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm clueless. I have no idea. And what you know what that sounds like? That, that sounds like to me is a Tony Robbins type of thing. 
You know, he's all about living your, seriously, like if somebody says, I'm going to tap your potential, that to me sounds like there's some life coach that's going to make me into the best person I can be. And that has nothing to do with what Mint.com does. So on both fronts, your, your interpretation and my interpretation, they failed with that headline. Yeah. yeah. And if the subheadline didn't save them, I would be clicking right off of that page because I'm mm -hmm. lost. Right. So take that in consideration too. Don't get cute. Don't get artsy. Don't get neat. You know, just tell the client what they need to know. Right. Period. Yeah. Um, we're not trying to win, you know, some award here for how clever we can be. Mm -hmm. We're trying to gain clients. Yeah. And as far as the subheadline goes, you can create a question out of that. You can make a statement. My statement that I say in my videos, but I really need to add it actually to my personal site is living a beautiful, stylish life while choosing products that don't harm animals. It's fashion, vegan, all that stuff. So, and I repeat that from video to video if I can only remember to do that. <laughs> Sometimes I forget, but that's my tagline and people can come to my site and know what I'm all about without even reading any of my blogs. I certainly hope that they do, but they're not questioning why they're there. So your subheading doesn't have to be a statement. It can be a question as long as it draws the visitor in and addresses that problem that you're solving for them. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and sometimes a question is a really good thing because it actually engages the person. They're sure. in their mind. They're going to answer that question. Mm -hmm. And that kind of creates that connection and that engagement and causes them to stay more involved. Yeah. So, now what we don't want though is for you to go overboard with this. Don't write a paragraph long subheading. <laughs> That's your, you know, save that for your content, but don't get too enthusiastic with your subheading or your headline. Mm -hmm. Just give the overall idea of what you're about and what problem you solve for people. That's all you need for the headline and subheading. True. And then next you move to your second and third most piece, important piece of information. So, you know, if you're a local business, that could be something like your physical location, your store hours. It could be the benefits of working with you. I always like it when you put your benefits. Uh, what, what is the client going to gain from the interaction with you, from doing business with you? But it might also be what you have to, what your other things you have to offer. Say you have a resource. So yeah. you've written a book, you have videos, you have a podcast, you have a course. Mm -hmm. That would be something that would be of interest to your client. So if you have a lot of these resources, I would say either just put one, like either the most popular one or the latest one, and then send them call to action to go to that page where they'll also be introduced to your other resources. Don't overwhelm them on the first page. Keep it simple. You might want to uh, include, well, what if testimonials? What if social proof is important to the decision to do business with you? Yeah. Then you might want to put testimonials on the homepage. But again, don't put a whole testimonial. I mean, mm -hmm. if you're like most people, you're going, you know, my clients, they write like paragraphs in their <laughs> testimonials. Don't mm -hmm. put that on the homepage. Pick out like a really pointed sentence within that testimonial. Mm -hmm. You'll notice this a lot when you look at uh, sales pages for courses and stuff like that. You don't see these long testimonials. It's one, two sentences at the max. Mm -hmm. But you'll find out later if you engage with them more, you'll find like the more detailed um, right. testimonial that had that that sentence came from. But yeah. don't overwhelm. Not too much information. Keep it to the point. I almost think of it like a sound bite. Yeah. Because quite often that sound bite is enough to give your client confidence to do business with you. And for those who need more detailed information, give them a nice call to action to go get more information from your testimonials page or whatever. Right. Don't overwhelm people on the home page. Mm -hmm. Give them just enough to engage more and to feel their need for information. You know, I talk about don't overdo it. Don't overdo it. Not too much information. You know, don't give them cognitive fatigue right off the bat. Yeah. 
Let them or, engage. Give them that clear call to action to engage. I can tell you someone who does this really well and someone who does this really badly. <laughs> okay. okay. Someone that does this really well is a restaurant here in a neighboring city. It's called Four River Smokehouse. Its website is 4rsmokehouse.com. They do one of the best jobs with graphics and minimal text I've ever seen. You go to their page, all their graphics are technically background pictures that they've put text over top so they can be indexed with the search engines can index the information and they can show up in the SERPs. You can read that page very quickly from the visuals and from the text. You know exactly what they do. You know exactly why they do it. And you know exactly how they do it. Mm -hmm. And literally the whole page is going to take you 30 seconds. Yeah. It's just one of the best jobs I've seen of this minimalist information on the home page. Yeah. And they have plenty of great calls to action for you to get more information, for you to buy from them, for you to engage. And one that does a really bad job at it is headhunterhairstyling.com. Now this is actually an attractive website. And from the home page and the graphics that are there, I know everything that this salon offers. Mm -hmm. It's not a problem. For me, as a visitor, not a problem. They tell the story in graphics. But the problem is there's absolutely no text, so <laughs> there's nothing for the search engines to read in order to rank this home page. Oh, wow, that's so true. Yeah. When I do a local search for hairstylist, Unless they've done a good job of getting links and they've set up a local page through Google Maps, that sort of thing, I'm not ever going to find them yeah. because they do not put any text on their home page. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's artsy, it's neat, you know, but it's a uh, right. It's wrong. <laughs> it's not SEO optimized. Yeah, it's not. So I think um, a good takeaway here is that you don't want to give too much or too little information. You want to give the search engines enough to find you. You don't want to overwhelm your visitors. And keep in mind that three is a great number. Don't overwhelm the visitor with too much information. Just stick to the top two to three most important aspects of your business so that they know what you're about. They get enough information to be compelled to find out more about you, but they're not just like hit with this explosion of stuff <laughs> when they come to your site and they don't know what to do from there. Yeah. Everything else besides those top two to three points, you can link to everything else. And you want to think of when a, when a visitor comes to your website, you want to think of them as taking a journey through your site. They start, wherever the home page is, whether that's your blog, like my personal site, or whether it's like Jill Conrath, you can either lead them where you want them to go by setting up a well-constructed website with calls to action, links to more information, very clearly laid out with enough white space, or you can just let them guess, and if they're overwhelmed or they really don't know what to do, they're gonna leave. They're gonna walk in the front door, see what you've got, and walk right back out and go somewhere else. So keep in mind, three is a good number, and find a balance where you're not overwhelming your visitors, but you're giving them enough so that they want to continue on their journey through your site. So to recap, know your number one problem you're solving for your number one client. Use that to create your headings and subheadings or tagline. Follow that with two to three of your most important pieces of information for your most important client things that they're wanting to know or they'll be searching for. Next, keep it simple. Simple fonts, simple graphics. Give them a clear call to action to get more information if necessary and to engage them and move them further into the sales process, your sales funnel. Then, finally, you're going to want to keep all secondary information inside your website, not on the home page. Use your navigation in your header and your footer to give them links to that secondary information. Mm -hmm. Remember, you are communicating with your ideal client on your homepage, not the general public. That's an effective homepage. So what we would like to know is, what is the number one problem you're solving? And is it clearly addressed on your homepage? If you're watching on the video, 
leave us a comment below. If you're listening on podcast, head on over to HowBusinessReallyWorks.com and answer the question there. You can answer it in the comments to this episode or contact us through the contact page. We would love to hear from you. And don't forget to like this video, share this video, especially if you found it helpful, share it with your friends and colleagues. And if you are listening on iTunes, please give us a review, hit those star buttons, let us know what you think. That will help us to get found in iTunes, which will help us help more people like you create a successful business. We'll see you on the next episode.